All right, so now we want to uh, take the next step in our tortellini tour. Yes. Um, and we want to create all the goodness on the inside and then figure out how to make these little things. And I'm giggling at the onset of this because Andy's like hovering three feet away saying, take it slow so I can learn how to twist these into tortellini. And you know why she's hanging so close? Because there's just no salmon here, okay? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm just going to add this in here. So we're just going to mash this up a little bit, all right? And let me feel this. Let me move that down, okay? So get a little... Uh, what did you put in there? I saw a little salt. A little bit a little of salt, butter. a little bit of five spice powder, tiny little bit of butter. And you don't even have to use the butter if you don't want to, but it does balance out that um, spice mixture a little bit. So we're just going to get this nice and smooth. Okay. One of the things, too, I love about sweet potatoes as opposed to a russet potato or even a Yukon gold is that they mash really easily with a spatula. They do. They're a little fibrous in some parts. Would we want to put anything else to kind of like to puree it or anything? You or? could puree it. You could use a ricer, too. So okay. I actually brought my ricer with me today. So uh, I had it as backup just in case. Just in case I complained yes. about it being fibrous. <laughs> yes, but it wasn't going to be and it won't be and you'll see why. Okay. That's so a ricer. What's a ricer? I'm so glad you asked that question, Miss Segway. So this is a ricer. It looks like a garlic mm. press on steroids, and you actually stick the sweet potato right in here and just squeeze it right out the bottom, okay? Thank you. So that's, that's what that is. Okay, so this is ready to go. And like I always recommend in my cooking classes and whatnot, make sure you taste your filling before you start wrapping, you know, doing things, sure. because if you don't, you may not like it after all, all right? Okay. So we're gonna start making some of these, and we're just gonna keep making them all, uh, during the, dur the break if we uh, get one. So what I have here is an egg that's been mixed with a little bit of water. So we call this egg wash, okay? Otherwise known as culinary glue. And basically what we're going to do is, looking for, there it is, we're just going to um, paint the outside of this. So go ahead and do okay. that a couple times. And then I have my trusty portion scoop so we can ensure we have the right amount of filling. And we're just going to plop that basically in the center. There. The little hobbits coming. And you can actually do it after you. Uh, actually, she's a tall hobbit. Plop it down, too. <laughs> she Compared to me, everybody is tall. Okay, so we finish up with that. Okay, so now, are you watching closely, Andy? I am. Okay, I'm over here. I don't want she's you to get actually shot doing later. it. Okay. <laughs> she's doing it on the side. I keep okay. having to pass it off so to her. Go ahead and grab one that has. Uh, go ahead and glue one All of these, right. too. Okay. There you go. So here's the technique you're going to use you're going to take your, ravi your wonton, you're going to fold it in half. And then you're going to squeeze it from the edges in, because if you go the other direction, you're going to end up squeezing the filling out, okay? So edges in so filling doesn't come out. Once you've okay. done that, you could actually stop at this point if you wanted to and just have like a wonton like this, okay. but where's the fun in that? So you're going to take your finger, push it down the center while you're bringing the sides up, and then just kind of push that down. And that is your wonton. Right there. I need glue. I need culinary glue. Culinary glue. That's where okay. it's at. Please grade me. I give you an A. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty awesome, actually. You got the technique. So Let me let's see yours. A. I've got a bunch of overachievers today. Now I love that. She has a hole in hers. Is it supposed to have a hole like that? <laughs> um, well, in her case, Thanks, yes. Steph. <laughs> All right. So let's try that again, just for uh, for grins and giggles, and right. uh, we'll see where that. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do little... this slow for people at home. So, you go to the top. Ooh, this one's a super packed one. We go the outsides first. Don't judge me. I need a manicure. And then we squish here, and we touch there, and then we tilt that up. Correct. And my goo is coming out. No, you're fine. Okay. It's all good, good. There we go. There you go. And then we're just going to keep going. So, so if we wanted to create enough for, say, a family of four, mm -hmm. and we were not serving it as, like, the main, it was just something for the family to nosh on before, but how many would we need and how long would it take, do you think, to um, prepare them? I think, well, once the filling's made, to do to pop these out takes about five, five, ten minutes at the most, and then cooking them, as you'll see, will take about three. Okay, so we're going to cook that in the last segment. Yes. Add a little sauce. Yes. Andy's going to taste. Yes. Because she that's what she does. That's what she does. <laughs> she does it so well. <laughs> I'm a good taster. And, and then we're going to provide the recipe online. You are a good taster. And you're getting so good in the kitchen. I don't know. I think I can like, handle that one, though. Thanks for showing me. Take her first steps. Let me make some more. All right. <laughs>